do. Hey, welcome everybody. We are live in the Don't Dream It, Stream It Marketing Happy Hour. It's Friday or Fry-yay, depending upon how cutesy you want to be. I'm Dr. <laughs> Christopher Vogelman with Maximize Your Media, which is our digital agency, and Life Beyond Practice, which is the group that I run for doctors who want to escape the exam room towards a life of greater free time, freedom, and funds. We put the fund, fun in funds. So, <laughs> and with me to my right, I'm starting to master the stage right thing. I'm going to try. And to my left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm Troy McDonald of liveventmarketers.com, which will actually take you to the Facebook group of the same name where we talk about live streaming uh, with the specific theme of business and or marketing and also all the things that go along with it, whether it's equipment, uh, mindset, and that kind of thing. So come on and join us and uh, we'll get you up and rolling and also give you any critiques or any help you need. Troy is exceedingly and helpful. And below us, we have- Hey guys. Day. <laughs> What's up, you guys? This is Cam Jennings, aka Cam Fats, uh, and I'm coming at you on behalf of EpicConversions.com, digital publishing, uh, publish uh, content paid and free about internet marketing with a real focus on list building and email marketing for the most part. Um, I think that's really the core foundation of uh, you know internet marketing, to be honest. And uh, I do a podcast, and I love hanging out with these guys on Fridays. <laughs> Fridays, yes. Hey, if you build it, they will come, I guess, with the email list. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's true. But you got to send them something interesting. So. Yeah, you got to send them something interesting every if once in a while. If you build it, they will come or you will unsubscribe them. Or they will, uns <laughs> or they will unsubscribe from you. Hey, what? Yeah. speaking of email, I just we just because you mentioned email, um, what has been your experience with people who have subscribed to your list, then they unsubscribe, and they claim that you sp were spamming them? Yeah, I'm okay with it if, that, okay. if that's if that's how it goes. I mean, I mean, it's it's like you're gonna have a percentage of people unsubscribe. Yeah. Um, now, I think that because like an active campaign, we have the choices in there. You know, I no longer want to receive it. No reason given, and then the spam thing. And I just say, if too many people are hitting that spam thing, doesn't it affect your autoresponder and your reputation? Yeah, it does. And I think that the the key with that is this: um, you need to you know, be very clear about what your voice is and email and, and how you're going to do it. Like with me, um, I like my emails to have some actionable content. I like them to be a little story driven. Uh, my main goal with email is to give them something in that email, whether it's a mm -hmm. joke, whether it's a piece of actionable content, they're going to get something when they open that email. And then I'm going to do it in my own voice, right? So it's right. going to be my own personality. Um, and then I'm okay with anyone who's like, this isn't for me, and they unsubscribe uh, mm -hmm. because I only want people on the list who want to be there. It's kind of like if you're running a grocery store and you got a product that's taking up shelf space, but it's not selling. It's like you'd yeah. rather get rid of it and use that space for something that is selling. So... Uh, I'm okay with it, man, because I got to pay for everyone yeah. who's on my email list. So. Well, yeah, we we all do that too. And I I think that you know one of the things that was concerning me was just wondering why all of a sudden the numbers were increasing of the you know I've been spammed, and I'm almost wondering if these are people who've just through all the craziness that's going on in the world right now just forgot that they subscribed in the first place. <laughs> could yeah. be it could be depending actually, on where you got the list. Yeah, actually, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, first off, there are a lot of people that don't remember because yeah. you may not have been mailing frequently enough. Yeah. Um, and then two, there are, for lack of a better word, amateurs on your list and mm -hmm. think that spam is kind of what you have yeah. to mark. If, or, or if, Yeah. If they receive an email, it must be spam. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and so what can you do about it? Nothing. I mean, they're just mm -hmm. going to be, you know, there's just the people and they get to make the choice of what they want to do, whether it is correct or not. And it's just like life. You know, somebody may decide to run a red light and hit, you know, hit you. You you didn't do anything wrong, but yet you suffer the consequences. And it's 
it's the same kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, it's, yeah, it's funny you say that because in my previous broadcast with my friend Monica Klein for our Total Health Live program, um, I mentioned to her I'd been in eight car accidents, six of which while I, were while I was sitting at a red light, rear-ended from behind. <laughs> But I don't have that bad karma anymore. I'm done with car accidents. No more. That's awesome. <laughs> now, now, how do you just flip that? Explain that to me, Chris. How do you just flip that switch and be done with car accidents? I, yeah. I want to know the secret to that. Cam, number one, don't <laughs> drive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I live, We live on an island of Coronado Island across the bay from downtown San Diego. And so there's 26,000 people here. And most things... I mean, we rarely get, go off the island anymore. That's and amazing, a lot of people man. around here drive golf carts. But I will tell you, one dangerous thing was one of our favorite school crossing guards was actually hit by a golf cart and no longer is working for the school district. And that was Holy kind of cow. Fun. Yeah, but you, there are a lot of golf carts around here, but they're, they're the governor uh, or governor stops them at 25 miles an hour, which is the speed limit on Coronado Island. Man, man walk me hour. through this, man. Now, how, how do you, you're going 25 miles an hour Yeah, and you hit a bus driver. You, you hit someone. No, you hit, you hit the crossing guard because you didn't stop. How does this happen? You're only going 25 miles an hour. How do you not stop when there's someone walking it, in front it, of you? It was it was a tragedy, and you know if you want to look it up on uh, Coronado Happenings, which is like our little patch or blotter, you'll find out all the gory details. But anyway, wow. super nice guy, um, survived you know all kinds of things from a number of chronic diseases, and that was the thing that ended his career as a crossing guard. And he was a former cop in Texas. Holy so, cow, that's yeah. amazing. Anyway, but that's that being what it is, we're talking about uh, a few things like email and other things. I want an update from Troy on his behind the scenes sheet thing and what's going on with your particular uh, studio. Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> I did do I did do a live into the live event marketers group the other day. Uh, talked about a few things that I picked up and and whatnot. Um, and that may actually be a solution and a problem. Oh. Okay. So first off, as as you know, I've talked about the simple fact of things taking forever to get here with you know shipping and whatnot. Um, but I do have I do have my lights installed now. I'm still toying with how I want them you know laid out and set up. Um, I am on my standing desk right now. I am standing up, so I can, oh. you know I can. Can you do sit down now, because so we can see how short you really are? Okay. So <laughs> 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 Maybe that kind of stuff, you know, um, and and whatnot. But I really like it because it, it, you know, allows me to just kind of, you know, be dynamic. Get you get can, a. You can do your Italian impression. Yeah. Or you can do um, the wings, like Red Bull. And <laughs> then, um, so then I, I have the the background set up how I want, um, and I have some accent lights that will be back there as well. But in but here's here's where the possible problem is. Okay, so I have my my SLR DSLR that will be um, back behind the Mac, mm -hmm. um, but in order to get the blurry background, and the reason why I'm having the blurry background is because it causes a. So if you look at your background here, and then this is you, it causes a, a visual separation, and it allows people to focus in on you better. Right. And I already have the camera. Okay, so I'm not necessarily jumping out and buy, you know splurging on that, but. I'm a tech nerd anyway, as I, I probably would have done it, but um, I got a specific lens for that uh, background effect. Okay. That what they call the bokeh effect, which is B O K E H. It's a Japanese from what I understand. Okay. And the thing is with the lens is you're going to have your, your, uh, your width that the lens will bring in. We'll just say, I'm trying to just keep it really dumbed down. And I have not yet installed it and tested to see how much of my actual backdrop that I've built back there or put mm -hmm. into place. So uh, it may not, it, I may not be able to have my full goal. So it's either the blur because that's the thing too. You have to work with one, whatever space you have, you know, you have to work. Yeah. With that. And so, you know, again, originally just thinking of, Hey, this is what I want to have the, you know, as the look, well, there's other technical things that you have to kind of keep in mind. So I'd rather have the blurry background than to, you know, have everything exactly in the background the way I want. Um, but I'll have to work and I, and I can work on that over time. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm waiting for the new camera mount to mount to the desk because these lights are mounted to the desk. So 
if I were to do a sitting situation, the lights would be in the exact spot that they need to be as well. So either I put it up and that's part of it too, is I want to set things up so that because since I will be doing my lives even more frequent on a pretty much a daily basis, I wanted to have something that kept me from um, not going live. So in other words, it was like, Oh, I've got to adjust the lights again here. I've got to, let me make sure the camera's positioned right and everything like mm -hmm. that. Again, every every little thing that you could do to remove as a, as a barrier for whether it's you know you to get your newsletter done, to get a video done, to get part of the course that you're writing done, you know all that kind of stuff like that. Then you want to have those things, put them into place to help remove those, um, or you know have have methods. There's less, there's less friction because everything's there. Right. So um, so in essence, I mean, I've already showed you some of what's. Kind of back down. You're not being see now. Uh, well, actually, hold on. Let me see. Let me. Let me. Let me. Uh, note, note. Note the absence of the sweatshop workers. Yeah. <laughs> Where they they, has their job been finished? <laughs> it's Freedom Friday. They're out. I, they're out working. <laughs> on, they they got off early. <laughs> they're out working. Only I have to. <laughs> let me. Let me turn on some power back here. Power. Oh, power to the people. You know, it's kind of cool the way he's doing it because it's almost like a journey. At, there's almost well, like a, a journey, journey effect. Yeah. You know, it's it's like yeah. you get more content out of it just as he builds it. It's Troy's, it's Troy's studio journey. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. Eventually, man. he will arrive at the studio. Yeah, and then you and then you're like, how did you how did you buy when it, someone's going to come in on it at the end yeah. when they see it all? And they're like, how'd you do this? Oh man, I got a whole like series go, where go I was back to the to it. several videos beforehand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is wow. the biggest reveal I've seen so far. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, can we ooh and ah now? Ooh. So is that ah. Pac-Man? Is that Pac-Man back there? Oh that's my the goodness. Pac-Man machine. Yeah. That's great, that's man. Great. And that's then on the great. other side over here, I have wow. my my centipede machine. Your centipede machine. Nice. Yeah. What is that? So, so let, let me put the curtain down. Oh. So for those of you who are interested, that happened at the 13 minute mark of today's broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Never to be seen again till it's finished. <laughs> yeah. So, so the real question is, you know, will I be able to get both, both of those into the frame? And, and I'll, yeah. the, the idea again is to have them like, you know, turned on while I'm in yeah. my live streams and stuff, because I mean, yeah. that's my vibe, you know, like I'm an old school gamer from the eighties yeah. or an arcade kid, you know, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to have, you know, my personality, period. You know what I mean? So um, well, I think you just dress up as Pac-Man for every broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to consider that. Get that head on there. <laughs> Bring your spouse on as Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. That's Let's try and improve your production value. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> that. So are you just going to slide that desk all the way back once the curtain is gone? or No. No. no, so that's that's the thing with you're going to position camera. the same. Yeah, yeah, well, the thing is with cameras, right? When you're using yeah. a DSLR, you have to take various things into consideration. There's the the focal point, mm -hmm. and so it the the lens that I'm getting, or the, excuse me, the lens that I that I just barely purchased, and actually, um, Amazon wanted to make me wait about two weeks. Mm. It turned out they're already going to charge me tax, right? So my local Best Buy happened to have it for the same price, and I'm going to pay tax anyway. So Best Buy got my business. There you go. Yeah, well, I mean that's. I think that the Amazon's distribution network was just bursting at the seams, and they hired somewhat like a hundred and hundred to a hundred and ten thousand drivers just in the that space of a month. Yeah, I see them all the time around here, man. Yeah. I see Amazon Prime drivers all the time. Yeah. Well, they have their own get? trucks now everywhere, which yeah. is so funny because I'm. I know we're seeing all these gray vans with the with the blue bent arrow. Oh yeah, yeah. Time. Um. Yep. Anyways, I was gonna look for my lens box, but I think I, I moved that into another location. Yeah. But I, I love it. That's interesting. But but what you need to understand, so if you are gonna go with a, a digital camera for your yeah. webcam, the things to think about then again is is, is focal point. So. And also the type of camera that you have. And I kind of went over that in my um, live event marketers group um, on the lens specifically. But you got to just remember that if you're wanting a blurry background, this is all I'm going to say about it. If you want a blurry background, you have to get a different kind of lens than one that, in essence, has an infinite uh, yeah. focus. So in other words, Something focus. different than this C920. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that will have pretty much an infinite focus that, like... Although I can't read, for example, the the titles on the books in the background there, yeah. they're 
pretty much in focus though. Well, but this, right now, this, is, this is just the resident camera within the MacBook Pro. Right. So. Yeah, I think I'm using the exact I'm maybe not exactly the same camera as what you just showed, Chris, but I think yeah. it was very similar, like a C nine thirty or something like that. Yeah, the nine thirty, I don't think the nine twenty is available anymore, but the nine thirty or yeah. nine thirty. It's okay. Really it's okay. It's it's now. like the I one mean, I use is all right. I'd like to go to the DSLR thing, but I mean, my, my wife uses most of, uses the, the, what is it, the Canon, the older one, the T5, TI5, for all of her photo shoots for her food and extracting it from the kitchen into the office may be more challenging than it's worth. So I think for the time being, I'm going to stay away from, I'll, I'd like to experiment with it in the, in the downtime when there's no food being photographed downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, we actually happen to have a couple of cameras, and this is this is actually a T3i, so it's about like an eight-year-old oh, yeah. camera. I used to have one of those. Yeah, and so you know, it's just repurposing it, and um, yeah. you know, that's that's the route I say that people should go first, especially. I mean, there's other other things too, like oh, I already have some of this cables, and you know, yeah. instead of just going out and just buying a brand new of everything, and um, you know, look at what you have, look at, and then think about what you want to do. But at the same time, I would say if you haven't done any lives yet, just go live with what you have and start just getting used yeah. to it. Cause that's part of what you're going to want. I'm, I'm a big live. fan of the, of the studio, the live video studio in your pocket. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for just way to start. being, yeah, just being consistent. There's a lot to be said just for showing up every day, being consistent. I think that can make up for quite a bit. And and that's one of my greatest challenges is getting to the point. We did it for like almost two and a half months, I think. Or at least John and I and Troy was joining us and we were broadcasting every single day. Woo! <laughs> and that was it was great because it really helped us get a lot more comfortable. I mean, just speak for myself. It helped me get a lot more comfortable yeah, staring yeah. at the little green dot on my screen rather than looking at people down below. And it, it enabled me to be okay with making mistakes, but don't do what I do when I did in the past, which is I overbought on all kinds of things. I was about to start a podcast. So I got the fancy arm. I got the Heil microphone and everything. And for two years, it all was pretty much in mothballs. <laughs> Never touched it. I thought, you know, like it's as if, you know, you were a, wanting to get healthy and you purchased a gym membership thinking that that gave you immortality. And so suddenly, you know, I am a podcaster because I bought equipment. No, you're not. So That's funny, man, <laughs> that that thing happened to me uh, when I was a musician. I guess I'm still a musician. But when I was playing a lot of music, um, I remember, man, playing in lots of bands and having really bad equipment, not that great of equipment, just kind of entry level, mediocre level equipment, whatever I could yeah. afford. Okay. And then what happened was I started working for myself, running my own business, making more money, more money. Now all of a sudden I will try to revisit music and I can buy expensive equipment, Yeah, but I don't use it. You know, it's, it's like, I'm not, my focus is shifted. You know, I'm not, I'm not there anymore, but it's crazy. Isn't it like this, like being able to buy it doesn't, doesn't make you the master of it, you know? Oh, it's just it's some more, more toys. I mean, I think it's, it's the old adage, which is what, you know, some people just kind of accumulate things. I'm not talking about you in this case, but, you know, fancy cars and this and that and everything, because the philosophy is he who dies with the most toys wins. Well, <laughs> so. actually, actually, let me let me, you know, you guys actually, this is a good segue. Yeah. So for me, I don't own a segue, by the way, that would just be a waste of money. No, segues <laughs> actually are pretty cool. If you've, if you've never ridden I one, would like one, right. but. I can't justify it right now. Yeah, they're they're spendy, <laughs> but we we did it. We went on a cruise, and as one of the excursions, it was a tour around and using the Segway, and it was totally cool. They do them around Coronado too. In fact, Maggie, when she started the social media business, she did all of the social media for the local Segway tour guy. Yeah, for yeah. A couple of years, and she thought so, she, that so was fun. Speaking yeah. then of a Segway or the Segway or mm -hmm. a Segway, <laughs> Segway. Into the segway is you know this really I, i've been thinking actually Are we both and segue yeah segue and segueing with the segue into the it's, segue. it's our segue segment brought to you by segue <laughs> i'm sorry man go ahead um is you know people do purchase things there are yes those who quote unquote collect things so to speak but there are also people say such as yourself who did buy originally the you know the microphone to yeah. to start a goal that you have, but what I've been thinking a lot about lately and something that 
I do touch on a little bit, but I also tend to kind of lean away from it if it's if if that's all that's focused on. Yeah. And that is the the motivation behind it. In other words, there are two things I see. So when it comes to online business is the mindset and the 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 thought processes and then the actual getting the work done. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that can do get the work done um, but then they don't have the mind the mindset to actually launch it so to speak or, right. or actually sell it to anybody. Failures and then the other way around they're super pumped and then all they do is remain pumped and amped, but then they never get around to actually producing the final product or thing that they want to introduce to, you know, the world. Yeah. And I really think that, that as much as there will be people that argue about just, man, just get things done and just sell your stuff. Well, it's not just that because what they don't realize is they have then the mindset already that actually does produce them to make the product and actually follow through. Um, so I know some people will argue that like, well, what's wrong with them or whatever you just do it and you sell it. Well, again, like I say, they already have that mindset and they don't realize it, but we also need to make sure that we work on both parts of it. And that's why I think actually having uh, a network of friends and people that, again, it's like your regular life, right? Who do you surround yourself with? Yeah. So when you feel like, should I do this product? Um, can I do this product? Do I deserve to do this product? Uh, am I smart enough to do this product? Am I am I an expert at this product? You know, like there's some other people that are better than me or right. such all that kind of stuff that goes on. And so I'm going to be doing also a little bit more on the the mindset because reality is I need that as well. I have my you know ups and downs that I go through, and I've done that over the years. It's just part of being human. Yeah. And I think to me, mindset is the, is absolutely the key because it, it, if you don't have the belief, the confidence in yourself that you are capable of producing something that's of value and that you are, I won't say fearless, that you are courageous, that you work through the fear and project yourself out in the world and that you're not going to mind being ridiculed. You're not going to be worried about being embarrassed. You can just move mountains. Yeah, but most of us, myself included, we sometimes are a little bit skittish about it because, we're, well, what will people think? And, you know, I live in a small town. What if people watch my video and I see them at the local store and this and that? Well, you have to kind of get over yourself because a lot of times people aren't paying attention to you as much as you may think that they are. Yeah. No, and especially now in 2020, I think there's a lot more people. Yeah. shifting to trying to figure out the whole online thing. I don't think it's as weird as it was before. No. I remember back in the nineties, like it was, it was weird. You guys remember back in the nineties, it was weird. Nobody like dated with online stuff. Right. Like, there were chat it, rooms. There were yeah, chat yeah, yeah, rooms right. with dial up. So like, and, that, and that was kind of, and that was, <laughs> but that was kind of a weird thing back then. You know, people were like, what you, you met your girlfriend online. What? And now it's like, that's the way they do it now. And, but I think this is an example, but I think with, like with this COVID-19 thing going on and with all this other stuff going on, um, you know, traffic is through the roof right now to places like Warrior Plus and JVZoo. There are so many people trying to figure out how to do the online thing right now. It's crazy. And I don't think it's as weird as it might have once been, you know, no, and I mean? that's what happened with that's what happened with us because my wife Maggie has a Mexican food blog and, you know, thousands and thousands of people in dms and crazy stuff and they're always asked every single day somebody asks you how do you work from home how do you make money from home and that was just the inspiration for creating a series that we're doing on how to make money from home because I, and part of it is just so people can just you can just show them the video and say you know you don't have to keep answering individual questions <laughs> yeah that's good man it's a real it's a good series y'all i watched a couple episodes of it um, well, we were two we're two down. We've got another one tomorrow at eleven Pacific, and another one on Sunday, and probably continue on Monday, I think. And then there's probably an opportunity there for a little. Course. Eventually, yeah. Eventually, I think it'll become a small group of mostly maybe mompreneurs or homepreneurs, whatever you want to call them. So probably we're just nice testing the water. There, this you know is just I mean? an experiment. I mean, and that's the whole thing. I would, if it weren't for Troy and the live event marketers and you, Cam, and several others, and John Paduchek in particular, and Eric Louvier, through whom I met John Paduchek, uh, we wouldn't be doing this. That's and amazing. so all the people that we networked with and met through both live event marketers and, and all the other people within our 
sort of circle of marketing community uh, gave us enough confidence to just say, hey, let's start putting stuff out there and see if anything sticks to the wall. And that's amazing, man. And and I know Troy pulled me into live event marketers. I wouldn't yeah. be in this group without Troy yeah. re recruiting me into it. So that's that's cool. You guys probably got like a little uh, – you guys probably got like a little course or a little membership program uh, in there with that whole like how to make money online because it's like yeah. the Mexican food the Mexican food blog is it's not how to make money online right and to be looking at someone doing making money online with something that's not making money online yeah it's it's not an internet marketing thing so the right. first the first broadcast we did was simply on blogging because Maggie my wife is a, is what they call one of the OGs one of the old gangsta bloggers because she's been doing it since 2010 <laughs> so she's 20 she's 2010 so she's the OG blogger <laughs> and uh and it's just it's fascinating how these things occurred because you know she did social media because she wanted she was a single mom wanted to stay at home with with uh, her youngster who was like gosh you know Jack was like he was two or two and a half at the time. And so, you know, single mom, not wanting to do the nine to five routine anymore. And, you know, started doing some social media management for a few local businesses, including the Segway guy, by the way, <laughs> and, and, and some real estate companies and others and accountants. And then eventually, but, but also the, the food blog simply was something that came out of her desire to preserve her grandmother's recipes for our son. Ooh, I love and it. So, yeah. an amazing story, and, and there man. was there was no intention to make any money out of Mama Maggie's kitchen. So, and and you know, and so that was, things take interesting twists and turns and out of out of the social media management grew maximize your media. We, I mean, it's changed in different names different times, but we rebranded it as maximize your media and Mama Maggie's kitchen has just taken off in the last particularly in the last 2 years or so. But you have to put in the work. You know, people look at her and think you, you're an overnight success. Well, you know, it took 10 years to become yeah, an overnight right. success. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I want to I want to touch on on two things real quick. So yeah. one thing that you talk about, Dr. V, is about, um, you know, um, being fearful and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think that people need to realize that you can be fearful, but still continue on and still yeah. move through it because the thing it's that, the mark of courage. Yeah. Courage yeah. is feel the fear and go ahead and do it anyway. Exactly. That's what it is. It's about the courage. Because I think some people think that, well, I've got to eliminate that. And no. I think the reality is, is you have to come to the realization that you can't necessarily get rid of it or all right. forms of it. Right. I think you'll become stronger with things as you, as you go along, but there'll always be something new like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm, things are working out, but I've never um, built a list. Right. I mean, like I've just sold like from, you know, PPC or pay-per-click ads or whatever. Or affiliate, and, yeah. Yeah, or, or, you know, what, and so I, I've never, so now I'm going into a whole nother realm of marketing that I've never done. And now you're fearful again, right? Mm -hmm. But it's but it's having the courage to still go through that. Okay, so you fall on your face, you get up and you keep going. And then you're learning just like uh, we talk about Mom, uh, Mama Maggie's Kitchen. Yeah. Okay, that was a 10-year overnight success, right? Well, right, exactly. <laughs> you, you build it up over time. Yeah. And um, the other thing I was going to say, so um, uh, with your guys' conversation was, mm -hmm. um, because there are a lot of people that that have a lot of marketing background, uh, and so that's what they want to teach, right? Yeah. I know it's interesting, and I think a lot of people start, this is, this is how I see it happen from over the years. I've looked at people, they want to start a business, so then they start, they run into marketing material, and it becomes very interesting to, to study that. Yeah. Then you become really knowledgeable about that and then now you think like oh that's what i want to teach so you kind yeah. of start out here as wanting to sell something but you didn't know what it was you started studying the marketing and then you become knowledgeable in that and then you're like okay this is what i'm the expert at and some people feel like one can i can i teach that mm -hmm. and i i say um yes however you do need, and this is because Cam alluded to this too, is, is that, I mean, you need to have some expertise in that, in the sense of you need to be able to prove to other people right. that what you're teaching actually works. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for me, my, my background was, I started again, uh, well, I, my background was direct response marketing. So mail order back in the day. And then when the internet came along, it was like, well, this to me is just an electronic form of, you know, of selling. And um, I've always been a computer nerd. So, I mean, the two just kind of 
kind of mixed. Um, and, and my knowledge kept growing with the marketing side of it. And I was always like, you know, do, do I do what I know? Is that actually applicable to some, some real business? Because my first business was selling some electronic stuff. It was selling artwork, um, yeah. digital artwork. It's, it's easier to grow. It's easier to grow too. Like, I know like when I first started, um, uh, I was uh, selling physical goods on Amazon, and then also I was running like a, uh, a YouTube channel about Nutribullet, this blender Nutribullet. I called it Nutribullet time, right? It was so easy to grow. They didn't the slap channel. you with a trademark nope. infringement. Okay, nope. they just want to sell more Nutribullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I get. Well, you know the funny thing about that is not to get off topic, but the, the funny thing about that is. I would get customer support questions sometimes <laughs> on my YouTube funny. channel. I was like, yo, we can't reach customer support. Let's go for Kim. <laughs> I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just the guy making smoothies in a Nutribullet showing you guys what this thing can do. <laughs> and, I, and I would answer questions like, can the Nutribullet grind uh, coffee beans? You know, can, you know, can the Nutribullet yeah. make rice flour? You know, I, and I just go through all these questions that were being asked That's in hilarious. Google. And it just grew like crazy. Um, very did quick, you, like did you like have a little, cam, a little cam cam on you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't have the little. I didn't have the little cam cam. Uh, cam, cam. cam, cam. <laughs> and then with the um, the uh, the Amazon physical goods thing again, it was just you know making money doing something that yeah. wasn't like necessarily just broadly making money online, but just right. this one little specific thing of selling physical goods on Amazon and it, and it worked pretty good. One thing I wanted to talk about though, that Troy alluded to, um, you were talking about fear. Um, and I noticed a lot of people come to me, uh, and they feel like they're new and they feel like I don't have, I'm afraid to, everything's already been said. There's nothing I could say on a live stream. Mm -hmm. It's all been said. I, right. I, you know, what can I say that hasn't already been said way better than what I can say? Um, and I think that feeds into the fear of not wanting to do it. Um, you know, I always tell people, look, man, just because someone else is doing something great over here, that doesn't take away from what you can do. Right. Um, and you're really, you're focusing on the people that are just a couple steps behind you. Th those are the people you're focused on. You don't need to help everybody. You're just looking to help the people who you might be a couple steps ahead of. So as one of my friends used to say, you just need to stay, uh, one trick ahead of the dog. <laughs> Exactly. Not that I'm not that I'm saying people are pooches. So. <laughs> you know, the, the way that I say it is, is first off, how many uh, burger places are there? In other words, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, you know, there's so in, many. In that, and out. Don't forget in and out. In and out. Five I mean, guys. so many and there will be continue. There will continually be more. Yep. Right. Yep. But they're selling hamburgers. Yep. Then the other thing is I agree with with Cam. The way I, I look at it is I say, so think about it. You're in the third grade, right? Well, you want to teach everybody second grade and below. Yeah. But but here's where the imposters, and this this is my hypothesis of uh, where the imposter syndrome kicks in is when you start thinking of the fourth and fifth and sixth graders, then you start feeling like an imposter instead of focusing yeah. on your second, first, and kindergartners and preschoolers. Yeah, don't try do don't try, you know, teaching calculus in the first grade. I think it's it's a real tight it's a tightrope. It is. It's it's there's definitely a balance between, you know, taking what you can from what those guys are saying, like taking knowledge away from it, but not comparing yourself to it all the time. There's yeah, definitely comparison, comparison just makes people I mean, comparison's a two edged sword. It can either make you unhappy that you're not as good as somebody, or it can inspire you to be better. Yeah. And for, most always us, gonna be for most of us, it makes us unhappy that we're not there yet, whatever there is. <laughs> yeah. And there's always going to be somebody better. My, my yeah. dad taught me that a long time ago, man. Yeah. There's always going to be somebody better. It doesn't yeah. take away from what you can bring to the table, yeah. though. So that's right. And I used to always say, in terms of marketing and all, I said, you know, if somebody who doesn't, they said, well, should I do a course? I'm going to do this and that. I used to always say that, you know, Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors for a reason. Not everybody likes pistachio and not everybody <laughs> will like me or some other flavor. You have your own unique flavor without being flavor flav. So <laughs> there's always room for another pizza place or, exactly. or burger joint. Yeah. There's so. another place anywhere. There's another taco joint. Good God. There are a lot of taco joints. Dude, in now you're making me want to eat tacos, man. There you go. Well, there's plenty of taco <laughs> recipes <laughs> at mama Maggie's kitchen.com. <laughs> So, sponsored today's event today's event was sponsored by segway <laughs> <laughs> kitchen 
and the cam cam. Yes, <laughs> and the cam cam. <laughs> So, so that that's something that I, I've been thinking about um, again recently. That I, I want, I'm going to have um, some of my live streams focused on that part as well. The the mindset um, where I always kind of think, you know, touch on it. But I mean, I think I'll do, I'm going to do some specifically where that's what the live stream is about. Yeah. Um, because again, you know, there's I just see the world as being an interesting place where we're at now. I, even before COVID, right? I had already seen some of this happening, and then I see now, just with all the all the kind of crazy and interesting things that are going on right now, um, you know, with the with the police and all. The, I mean, just there's so many different things. I don't think that life is necessarily going to get any easier, right? As, as time goes on, it might get more interesting. Yeah. Well, no, that's it's interesting I, enough I, for me right now. I, I'm ready I, for it to get easier yeah. and less interesting. Maybe want some boredom. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think the, you know, people are needing more of the guidance, not as in a, okay, you, you know, okay, you buy this, you know, Adobe Acrobat, cause that'll allow you to, to make a PDF. Yeah. I mean, look, that's, you know, that's there and you can teach that and you should teach that. However, there is the, also the, the mindset of, again, why should people, you know, why should you continue on with your product or your view? Um, well, then the mindset that you have the discipline to go through the product, or the service or whatever is there. So, cause yeah. so many people never finish a course. Yeah, they don't. They're in love with chapter one. <laughs> chapter one. With- actually the books that you see behind me, actually these books, I've read most of them, but I have a whole library in the stairwell, which I'll show sometime. There are many of those books that I've only read one or two chapters in, but I got what I needed yeah. and then just put it on the shelf. And I've got, I've actually gone back to those books over the last five years of being in California. I would say I've gone through at least maybe about five to 7% of those books. So it sometimes it pays to have a library. Yeah, definitely. Love libraries, man. Well, I, hope they, know, I hope they never get rid of libraries. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I, I remember old school, man, going to the library and, and looking up SRDS stuff and everything. Um, you need that card catalog. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, that's, but that's an interesting thing. Uh, that's another thing that I've been looking at more recently as I'm putting together some, some of my own stuff is the consumption. So mm-hmm. I do believe that, you know, audiobooks are an excellent form to consume things. It's my primary now. They're hot, I, now. I really, They're hot I, right now. I really do like the physical book thing. Cause I do like to yeah. highlight still. And I'm, I, it's, you know, probably old school. Um, at the same time, I do like audio versions because then it allows me to kind of multitask. Now, I know we can argue about there's no such thing as multitasking. Which is what I probably but, would, but I won't. So. Right. But <laughs> I will, I will wait. But this is the way I look at it. Is So like, let's say I'm, you know, I'm out doing some yard work, right? Yeah. Um, I can have a book on or even a podcast. Yeah. And if, I, if I'm going to get little snippets, but I can make it through to the, to the finish, I'm going to get more done even if i'm not you know even i'm if i'm multitasking then having that book sit in the shelf and True. never cracked open so that's so why you, so you'll take your snippets while you're snipping those hedges yes my, okay. i'm taking live snippets from what i'm doing live <laughs> live snippets from snippets <laughs> and that, that and i'll tell you what that on the other end of that and that's a fantastic point and there's a lot of people making money with audiobooks right now oh, yeah. so on the other end of that i would say that if you're going to be doing live streams um, don't discount the fact that some of your live streams, if you plan them strategically, um, mm-hmm. they might become chapters for an audio book, um, yeah, chapters and, for an audio book, or they, your live streams could become podcasts. Just strip yeah. out the audio. Yeah. And exactly. if you were to see my notes, guys, you would see both of those on there. <gasps> <laughs> That's oh exactly God. it. We were, read, we were reading your mind, man. That's <laughs> right. I mean, because if you think about it, um, so I'll give a little, I'll give a little, peek behind the curtain about about that stuff is is what i'm what i'm putting together is about um creating stuff to be easily consumed many different formats to be consumed and also um we have actually talked about this on on previous uh live streams that we've done but also um being succinct right so that your book that while it could be you know five chapters we'll just say i know probably even longer but but can you actually make it more succinct into three chapters? Because then that increases the odds of it being completed. Um, and so helping people to consume your material is another thing. And I think that that is actually not thought of enough. 
Now, with that said, there are also the people that, you know, will want more, so to speak. So I, this is what I kind of believe. There, there's the, your kind of core material that, um, think of it as like your, the, the mini course that everybody needs, you know, you know, to, what are the many, what are the things that you need to take care of your car? The basics, right? So here's, here's the formula and the stuff and say, that's, a, that's a three chapters. And if they ever only get through that, they, you know, it will do, it will serve them well. But then there's the, the, you know, appendix and the, um, not, not the kind in your body, but you know, say mine's been taken out, so I can't have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's the additional things or the more detailed stuff you can do for those people who have that kind of, um, mode of operating where they really like to sink into some of the details and that kind of thing. And, and things that really just do need clarification, but I do believe in, in, in having the, the two pieces to it where you have your, your base, uh, in essence, base model or your, or your base principles and concepts that people can absorb and get something from your course and your, and or your material. And then you can, and then you have the in-depth stuff that you can add in and, and trickle on. And that can come a lot from people asking questions of your original base course that you might then need to adjust. Like, okay, I really don't go into enough that I think that should be in the base. So I'm going to adjust that. And then you can also have your additional stuff that you add in to the afterward or, you know, your follow-up or your additional training training that you add on to that. So Mr. McDonald, would you like the option of greater detail in this Buick that I'm about to sell you? <laughs> so, and, and then also strategically, uh, just exactly like Cam said, that you plan your live streams. Uh, this is how I look at it. So your live streams as into podcast material. Right. And then into audiobook material. Now, mm -hmm. audiobook material needs to be done different ish. And we're not going to get in that full conversation. However, you can take your podcast and then determine what will make a good audio book. And then you, then you can turn that into an audio book, but then some, and so then part of that job is done for you in the sense of helping you figure out what you're going to. Well, there was, was there, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. sorry I was gonna say, there was an example that Russell Brunson gave the other day in a video that I watched from, I think this may have been two years ago. And he talks about how he had one of his assistants or gal works for him. I think he paid like 10 or $20,000 for her to go through 500 podcasts of the marketing in your car <laughs> series and then to create what essentially became a book. But she had to distill all that information into the best of, but had to listen to 500 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the material, it's great to create content, but then you've got to, you really do need an editor, I think, to be able to distill it down into something that's easily consumable. Yeah, that's true. Right. And, and I'll just, uh, Cam, I want to hear what you have to say, but the one point that I'll say onto that is, so going into doing your live streams, or if you're just straight doing live, or if you're doing podcasts, which of course I'm doing live, then into podcasts, and then that becomes material. Is, is you're strategically already thinking though about what, what things would you like to have in a book? And then you're working it backwards mm -hmm. to, to this yeah. way to it becoming, you know, the podcast, which of course becomes the live stream. So that again, you have somebody else, uh, you know, you hire it out or you do the work yourself, whatever, where then you, you go mm -hmm. through that and say, these are the points. And I now want to turn that into an, a physical book, audio book, et cetera, or, or a bonus product. But Cam, you were going to say, yeah, let's go to the cam cam. Yeah. I was just uh, going to say, when I first started and, and as, as I was on my online journey, I, uh, I had a habit of making life hard for myself. I, I would have these ideas, like kind of similar ideas we're talking about right now. And uh, I would have in my mind that, I, you know, that I need to change this a lot and I need to, I need to do a lot, all, all these things. And um, I would create a lot of work for myself. And I'm, I'm kind of being vague right now, but the point is I would create a lot of work for myself. Um, and I think, when you start talking about ideas of taking a piece of content and maximizing its value by spreading it around and repositioning it in different places and stuff, I think you got to be really, really aware of how much time and effort you're putting into that project. Uh, you should be getting a lot more out of it than the time and effort you're putting into it. And if you're not, then it's probably not a good use of your time. Like for me, when I was thinking about this idea of audiobooks uh, from podcasts, Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm, I'm coming up on a hundred podcasts. Maybe I can reposition some of this, uh, uh, content into like an audio book. Like for me, how does it make sense? I'm not going to go through there and like spend hours and hours and hours of my time editing. How can I do it easily? Maybe I could do like, uh, you know, maybe the audio book is, you know, 
10 podcast episodes on list building, right? And and it's like the name of the audiobook would be very simply like exactly what it is, or at least the subtitle of the audiobook would be exactly mm-hmm. what they're getting. So there's no surprises. They know they're going to get 10 podcast episodes in that right. audiobook. Um, and I think that's a fantastic way to do it because you're not going to spend a lot of time doing it. And I think with the audiobook thing in particular, uh, there's a lot of competition now with Audible. And there's some distrib- nice distribution platforms for audiobooks right now, so it's it's pretty lucrative right now. I think. Yeah, so I, I, mean, I, I just have. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it definitely what I'm talking about is not necessarily the beginner's journey, and I definitely right. am not a beginner, so I understand what what I have laid out for yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Watching <laughs> or listening. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a, a beginner's thing, but um, I get my my also overall um, principle or concept behind this too is is omnipresence. Yeah. So, you know, that's the that's the that's the overlying. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's the bookshelf, right? And then everything. That's the theme, right? Your bookends. But yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So what I'm saying is not necessarily again, like I say, for the the beginner. But I, but if there's a piece that anybody can take out, whatever level you're at, is think again what the end, the end is that you have in mind, and then bring it forward to what you need to bring that to fruition. Yeah, like work backwards from the end. That's yes. a really good point, man. You know, I still remember Stephen Covey in one of the seminars I took, staring right at me, talking about the obituary method. <laughs> the <laughs> obituary, obituary now. <laughs> He was a little everybody scary. Drinking, he was a little anyway. staring straight at you. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> what What are you drinking today, Troy? Ah. Uh, it's an IBC uh, black cherry soda. Oh, it's fantastic, man. I have an empty coffee cup. I've been consuming coffee. And the only reason I have not resorted to an alcoholic beverage is that we've gone low carb for the last uh, several days. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to fight the COVID-15, kind of like the freshman 15. And so because of the lack of activity, but I know that alcohol actually stops the fat burning process in the Krebs cycle. So for you biochemistry nerds out there, don't do those drinks. So Hey, man, listen, you got to be careful on the island with all the golf carts and the alcohol anyway, man. Alco- golf carts and alcohol do not mix. The worst, <laughs> the worst thing is watching people. There's so many bicycles on the island, too. And so <laughs> there have been people pulled over for biking and drinking. The HU tickets, I kid you not. And people who are looking at their cell phones while riding a bike. What? How do you even do or that? Or skateboarding while you're, you're you're texting someone while you're skateboarding. Dangerous. People do stupid I've seen that. stuff. They just do stupid stuff. There is no cure for stupid. I'm I just mean, going lim- lemon ginger tea today. Lemon ginger good. tea. That's so. good. I had I had uh, ginger turmeric tea earlier in the broadcast with uh, Monica Klein for Total Health Live. So nice. I had a drink something healthy during that broadcast. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, I would have had a beer. So <laughs> the night, yeah, I was going to say the night is young. <laughs> the night is young. Yeah, I, I've I've done pretty well. I, it's funny when you. you I, you, I drink maybe once every two days or sometimes five days in a row. And now four days in a row with no alcohol, I notice no difference. So that's what's really interesting. It's comforting that I'm not yeah. dependent upon it. So That's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so where are we time-wise? I'm kind of curious. We, this has been going on. No, oh, not too bad. We've got about maybe so you got, 10 minutes left. Yeah. So, so you guys both do live streaming quite a bit. Um, maybe yeah. we can give this to the people watching the show. Like, What are some things that you've noticed uh, with live streaming that has helped you bring on uh, viewers and engagement or whatever? I can only speak for myself, <laughs> which is not being afraid to be yourself making as many bad puns as I normally make in real life, um, willing to make mistakes. And I think part of it's like, you know, once you get over 50, you just don't care anymore. <laughs> and so <laughs> I think that's very helpful to be aged, aged to perfection so that, so that people can actually resonate with you, that you're a real person and not pretending to be from Harvard, as Troy likes to say. It's funny. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of. Uh... He ribs me all the time for that. 
<laughs> well, you know, it's 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 the accent. How can you not? Especially when John's on. When John's oh, John, on. when John's on, I get all New England like wicked, wicked awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's camping. He must be camping somewhere. He's probably in the North Country camping. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't so, think I've met John yet. Yeah, well, that's because John decided that it was it was summertime for him, and he was he's going to go yeah, out. So he's so. He, if he was on here, he would not be a happy camper. He wouldn't. <laughs> no, because he likes to camp a lot. When as soon as the weather gets nice, <laughs> I hope he watches this later. <laughs> um. So your question then, Cam, was how do you get more viewers? In a sense, right? Yep. I, I yeah, viewers. Viewers is just being more of you, and then just frequency i mean the algorithms will reward you for frequently broadcasting live but as angela used to say has said more than once in her uh in the event uh, live event marketers group she will say that you know it, it took her about six months of live broadcast to start getting traction yeah no so, doubt yeah, i i think i think it's just like any anything else right if you provide quality content uh where you're reaching a, a a specific audience where again, you know, you're not reaching that whole audience. If your whole audience is three people and they're already watching, well then you're out of luck, right? That's but, for sure. There's your reach. You've reached maximum reach. You reach max. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, you have to have something that that in essence people will, you know, will like, will comment on, will tell their friends about. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to because as much as the alg algorithms will help you, uh, I wouldn't depend on that kind of stuff. No. You have to be you have to be something that um people will look forward to attending mm -hmm. right so so that's where the frequency comes in or more of the the better word is kind of more of a reg a regularity i think this consistency yeah, yeah. the a consistency yeah. so that's like um and i've seen i've seen consistent inconsistency so for example like if you watch youtube right there are people that are consistent that will broadcast yeah. at, a, at a particular day at a particular time for a specific topic, but right. they also may go on a different day at a different time for a different topic. Yep. And, and but at the same time, you know that on this, you know, on Tuesdays at seven p.m., this is what they do. Yeah. I also know other people that on on YouTube because that's really where the consistency really kicks in when you when you follow YouTube people compared to say Facebook, yeah. right? Get more in YouTube. And so with with YouTube though, here's the consistently inconsistent. Meaning that they always broadcast every single day, and for a long period. Now I'm referring to I'm thinking of a particular gamer that I I kind of watch every now and then because he he'll play like a lot of different games and and I'll see yeah. if I want to get the game because I like the game on Friday nights. So, mm -hmm. um, but I know that like he's going to be you know streaming sometime today. So he's not necessarily consistent on the time. But he does stream for you know two, three something hours. But you also know the day of the week that he's coming. Yeah, well, yeah, because he does yeah. actually every day. Well, that's yeah. You know, that's that's the thing. So he's not necessarily consistent on a particular time, but he yeah. does stream every day. So yeah. people know that they can catch, you know, uh this person. I won't throw his name. Well, I know I guess it's not really anything bad to, to drop to drop his name, but the typical gamer is who it is who I'm referring to. No one is Please available. Please leave your name, telephone um, number, and a brief message. But, uh, you know, but yeah, so I mean, he, he just broadcasts enough on a daily basis. So it'd be like, say, for example, you know, Angela, you know, with her doing her, her daily lives. Right. Again, what I will soon be doing once I finally get this set up, I will be doing my daily lives as well. And um, or at least more daily than not. I mean, it's not, not, not going to say that like. Oh, I'm going to skip a Thursday because I'm doing something with the family. I mean, it's summertime or whatever, right? But with them being a live snippet, you know, uh, it's super easy to kick one of those out, even sure. if you're going to run out the door. So, well, and I don't mind. I don't mind kicking out stuff just on the phone. I mean, I did that with Instagram Lives and others because during that time period of doing like two and a half months of lives straight through, sometimes it would just be okay. I'm going to do something, but I don't have it formally done. I don't have it set up or anything. So it's like ten o'clock at night. I just go live. And yeah. that just got me into the habit, and now I'm out of the habit. And I was on the, I was on a, uh, on a Facebook, yeah, Facebook video call with John before he left us for greener camping pastures, and and he said, you know, I really miss us doing lives every day. And I said, yeah, I mean, because it's it's something that's very familiar. You look forward to it, and in that in that many cases, it didn't really matter if there was an audience there or not because we we're just having a conversation. Yep. Those are great points, you guys. Um, 
to those points, I would just probably add to people what I've noticed uh, with, with my own live streaming is um, when, my, when I schedule the live stream a few hours in advance and more importantly, like if I seek out groups that are okay with me sharing that scheduled live stream, uh, that really, really helps. Um, the second point I would say is uh, when I go down my timeline, when I, when I log into Facebook and I go down my – Sorry guys. When I, when I go down my timeline and, uh, and I comment on everybody's thing and I just, I just go down it a little ways and just comment, engage with those people. Then when I go live, uh, Facebook notifies all those people that I'm going live yeah. uh, that I just had engagement with recently. And then the Comment, third thing, yeah, commenting in the comment section and just responding. It's a huge thing. Yeah. And then the third thing I would say for people is, um, when you're going live, uh, shouting out the people who are attending that right. live stream. Um, and then, oh, another thing that I thought was interesting, the other night Troy went live and he tagged me in, in, in the thing. And uh, that got my attention. I didn't see it live, but that got me to come and view the view the live stream, which was pretty cool. Pretty good tactic, I thought. So it was cool. Well, yeah, but don't, don't, don't tag people who don't want to be tagged because – We've had that problem before. You can't just lie to them and tell them they're mentioned in there, but well, really actually, they're not. No, don't do that. Don't do, <laughs> don't do sneaky black hat, gray hat stuff. Well, Dr. B, I'd say this, like, look, tag them if it makes sense. And if they don't like it, yeah. then, hey, then get off Facebook because that's how it works. Yeah, but, well, I mean, but, but I know people who spam other people with tags, and it's just not cool. Right, and, th and that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, if it doesn't make sense. And I actually tagged Cam because I did talk about him in the live. He, he talked so, about you can there. you by the way Troy Troy Cam you can tag me all you want it's okay as you can have us but don't take a can of spray paint to the house that's all I'm saying <laughs> just don't tag my house yeah you mean you mean don't be like uh, the the Seattle mayor who says like yeah man go for it and then they attacked her house and then then she freaked out tag it tag it and bag it no that's, uh, that's a whole different story so that did we help any did we help anybody today guys I think we helped somebody. We had, we had a few people watching, but, you know, it's different on different days. Sometimes we have 16, 20 people on live. Sometimes we have zero. Sometimes we have five. But being consistent really helps a lot in terms of developing long-term strategy, developing an audience that, whom you can help. Hey, we've got we've got um, Vicky here who apparently is, is an expert, <laughs> and uh, she's making comments on the post. Hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Here's my question for you. Where is what, um, what is your question, Vicky? What, what could we do to help you? Seriously, we, we're not trying to depress you or, uh, or, or, uh, you know, put you to sleep or anything. But what, what would help you? Oh, uh, this. Where guy, is Vicky? Because I can see in the chat on Facebook. Um, actually, oh. Vicky, I think is uh in a group. Um, well, it's coming through on the the live comments. But huh. interestingly enough, it's so uh, strange. I don't see them. I started this thing. You need to. You need I to. I think Vic has got problems besides second. us. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Well, this just goes to show that Doctor okay. needs to understand how to use Streamyard better than he. Oh. He knows. I have never had. I, mean, I have not had these problems before because I mean I, I see all the things that are here. I actually think she's watching through what is a share as opposed to the ones through which we're multi-streaming. Actually, no. I bet you this is off. Well, you know what? Anyway, it doesn't we'll matter. Find out later. We'll track exactly. down Vicky. I will tell you that I know I, I know who this is, and it's okay. uh, that it's it's really not a Vicky. It's a fake account, oh. and it's the, um it's the guy that has bothered us before. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, I mean, hey, you know what? What's very interesting though, with all the live streams that that go on. Yeah. Uh, this person really, really must like to tune into us because they like to come in and have. Oh yeah, this but this person just suddenly appeared here. You know, it's really funny because it's a long delay. I wonder if it's my internet connection is a little slow, because you know it's like you, you get you get the the mean people come through slower. So maybe uh, Streamyard is doing me a favor by letting me ignore the uh, comments that are of little to no value. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No. Anyway, but thank you, Streamyard. So yeah, that's not a real that's not a real fan. 
coming through. No. <laughs> it's funny because in John, I see, cause we're using a different account today and John would just would ban or delete people when they were making all kinds of comments about his appearance, but I haven't mastered the art of booting people. So well, you know, they can look forward to this at a later time. <laughs> the interesting thing is, is, um, and then I didn't see this before when we've done the lives, but it says some destinations yeah. won't get comments. And as yeah, a like, I think that's part of it. Well, you guys know that you guys know that this is funny. V Vicky here is a really good example of someone who wastes a little too much time and they don't spend enough yeah. time trying to work on their business instead, you know, just kind of trolling instead of doing what they should do. They're not productive enough. Maybe we're, our next live stream should be about time. productivity. Yeah. <laughs> we're trolling. We're hating. Um, so what I was saying about like this, about the, the comments thing like that, I haven't that, I haven't seen that before. So I wonder what changes or, or whatever have come up. You know, it could be it could be a Facebook thing too, because with these with these rollouts, weird things are happening. Like today I couldn't yeah. tag Troy on the live. And I was like, what? So now I have switched from Dr. Vogelman profile, the page profile to Christopher Vogelman, the personal profile, then no problem. But prior to this week, I've never had a problem tagging Troy. So yeah, what about it has been being weird. Um, but you know what, at the same time, I mean, I guess, you know, for, if you want to put a little bit of a rainbow on this all, Hey, look, out of all the live live streams that could be attended right now that this person could troll, which is really not Vicky. It's it's another it's a guy that yeah, from anyway. It's hey, a pretend, I, it's a faux profile. Somebody somebody wants to come in and troll us, so that's I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. We'll I like An Angela's we'll approach, Angela Langlot's approach. I love her approach, which is she takes the those trolls and, and others and she uses them as examples in content creation. I love that's it. like well, the best. She said, "Here's an example of a troll, and here's an example right. of somebody." That's why I called it out. Yeah. And, la and last so time cool. I checked, there's not much money in trolling. <laughs> no, there's not a lot of pay in trolling. You got to so. you gotta be rolling, not trolling. <laughs> I love it. It's our new expression. That's Keep it. rolling, no trolling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've actually gone two minutes past our one hour broadcast. Thanks to Vicky. It's Vicky. Thanks, fault. To, thanks, thanks Vicky. Vicky. We are victorious. <laughs> Vicky Toria. Vicky Torius. Vicky Torius. Really a dude. So anyway. Yeah, Vicky. Vicky's, I mean, Vicky is of, of sort of questionable orientation. That's all I yeah. can say. So <laughs> all right. So with that in mind, we hope you got some value out of today's marketing happy hour. And we will be back here again next week. Troy's going to help me with this at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain. Same yeah. mountain. Yeah, that's right. Mountain. Oh, I, and and I, I love you. <laughs> eleven a.m. Hawaiian time. Because if you're in Oahu, we want you. Aloha. Right. Aloha. <laughs> See you later. See you <laughs> guys. Week.